Hi guys and welcome to this, the most important video you're probably going to watch today on Seasonal Indices. Yes, it's part of the Further Math Unit 3 and 4 course here in Australia and around the world and hopefully you've been following along with all the previous videos. It is building on and it is our penultimate video for this series. Um, it is really good to have you here. If you haven't already done so, can you do me the greatest of honour and clicking that little doohickey in the corner to subscribe for YouTube. There's about 19 people watching these videos at this moment. If we could make it to 20 would be awesome. Uh, get it out there and uh, if you can tell your friends would be greatly appreciated as well. And head over to mathsguru.com if you're not already there where you can search all of these. It's nicely ordered by textbook and there are downloadable notes as well. Right, that's enough of the promotional stuff. Let's get on with the fun stuff. So by the end of this lesson, hopefully you're going to know what a seasonal index is. And uh, in realism, it's actually not that challenging. Uh, understand how to calculate seasonal indices from raw data and how to de-seasonalize data, uh, turn it back into raw data and how to understand and interpret seasonal indices. OK, now in previous lessons, as I say here, we've looked at three mean smoothing, five mean smoothing, two mean, four mean, median smoothing, all of this has the word smoothing in it. OK, so the point of smoothing is to be able to come up with some sort of a trend and to see whether there's an increasing trend or a decreasing trend to describe our data. Because further maths, if you remember, is about describing the data. Yay! In the previous lesson, we came up with this graph here that time was along the bottom and room percentage. Uh, this was hotel occupancy rates. And we saw that by drawing on this trend there in this line of best fit, this least squares line, if you want to call it that, um, would give us an idea of whether things were sort of increasing, decreasing, or in fact had no trend whatsoever. Now, in this situation, seasonal data, oh, those seasons throw things and make predicting that little bit more challenging. So what if we could take out the seasonal data? If we could actually remove those wobbles that are there because of ice cream sales in the summer being much, much more than ice cream sales in the winter. What if we could sort of fudge the data so we could rise, uh, raise up the ice cream sales in winter and sort of reduce them a little bit in the summer to sort of come up with some statistical way of seeing whether we could smooth that out a little bit. And realistically speaking, seasonal indices is just another way of smoothing. And if we remember that the whole point of this is to come up with some sort of trend line, life should be good. OK, seasonal indices. Now, seasonal indices tell us how a particular season, generally a day, a month or quarter, compares to an average season. The most important word there is average season, because to work out this data, these seasonal indices, you need to use averages. OK, but we're looking at comparing one season with the average for all seasons. OK, so here's an example of ice cream sales. I love the idea of ice cream sales. I love ice cream. Who doesn't? We look at the sale of ice cream sales. So I basically made this data up and I've got January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December on the top. And now I have my sales. And as you would expect, we can see that my sales in January and December are a lot, lot higher than they are in June or July. Why? Because here in Australia, it is winter in June and July. And as such, not many people buy ice creams or obviously a lot more people buy ice creams than you think should. We want to now take uh, our data and rubbing up this stuff. And I would like to be able to compare, well, on average, how much more was my January sale? Or on average, how much less was my July sale or my June sale? Well, the way we do that is, as I keep saying, we take averages. Now, don't press stop, not just yet, guys. This is a preview video and you've reached almost the end of it, but it does continue over on mathsguru.com. Mathsguru.com, yep, that's my custom website. Bits of it you can see around me at the moment. That has been designed to allow the videos to be easier searched than they are on YouTube. So you can search by chapter, by textbook. Each video has downloadable notes for you, so you can put them in your summary book or your exercise book. There are exam questions and there is more and more content and more stuff coming as time allows. So head on over there. It's absolutely free to sign up and I'm doing everything I can to make sure that you guys enjoy maths and actually take out the mastery of maths. It is not as hard as you think. It is all smoke and mirrors. Okay, thanks very much. Take care guys. I look forward to seeing you in another video. Stay safe.